Okay, guys and gals and viewers of the tube. I've got Paul, Steve, and James. Uh, Steve is the owner of Summer Breeze. He bought it from uh, our brokerage, from me specifically, and now we're on a, um, uh, what is it? The total mileage is what, 700 miles about? Yeah, something like uh, that. Delivering it up to Tennessee, but yep. uh, the first big one was, it's three days, so we brought uh, James with us as the engineer for the trip because, A, it's a 40-year-old trawler, and B, we don't know what's going to happen, and it's a desolated area, so we don't want to make sure that all of our, uh, everything's covered. And as far as captaining the boat, Steve captained the boat. He's the owner of the boat, and he did a freaking fantastic job to every call you made. I don't see any, did you, James? I mean... Yeah, like uh, like I said, no no bad decisions. Uh, you know, high stress moments, for sure. Yeah, I think but, one yeah, or two. Yeah, or two, yeah. But that's not always going to happen. Pulling out of the marina, you know, that was, that was a good call because right. the wind was blowing 25 knots. It, that is a tricky Steady slip to get out of. 25. In fact, that Lulu's, the flag, yeah, it was, at one point was up. Yeah, yeah right. it's yeah. a huge flag, and it wasn't just straight out, it was up. But we're all looking at the app saying, we got to go. or Because we had a right. two or three a hour window. window, and you saw what happened on Mobile yeah. Bay. It started yeah. getting rough towards the end, but it, right. we, we did fine. Yeah, we it checked was... National Weather Service. You know, their forecast discussion Correct. was detailed, and, and it said at sunrise, the wind's going to lay down, right. and, and it did. You know, those guys have a tough job, too. Yeah, right. And uh, they don't always get it right, but uh, there's a lot of science behind that, and you need to leverage that information, you know? Yeah, you do. And so you said, Paul, why don't you take it out of the slip today, which was the right call. Yeah, it was great decision-making. That's yeah, good that's, happening right there. Yeah, like saying, I can't do this, but I have someone that can, so right. I'm going to swallow my pride and just, just say, do it right. you guys got well, it. I wasn't going to do it as well, at least, right? Yeah, right. It, it was going to be taken slow, as longer, and, right. and in which, that wind... When we had that gap in the wind yeah we, needed to go. Move we fast. just needed to go right. Yeah. right and so but after that you drove the boat the entire trip slipped it even last night in the, the it was amazing and it was raining and it was dark out and you put yeah. it right in the slip i thought you did phenomenal with a was. with a handheld spotlight and uh, yeah, a lady on the dock with a cell phone light or something that's, <laughs> that's how we did it right yeah. and we didn't even break anything so that was pretty cool <laughs> don't break anything and nobody gets hurt it's a it's a good trip yeah but coming down i thought the boat handled really well in mobile bay there i'll show you guys a couple shots of it uh we got into probably two to threes uh pretty solid two to threes on the stern it was on uh, the out of the south which is good in mobile bay yeah, yeah. and so and it i thought the trip yeah. across mobile bay i've heard nightmares about mobile right. bay but we i thought it it's my great. least favorite body of water to sail across yeah it's not, I, I do not like when mobile it came bay. back to that window as we progressed you could just see it building yeah it was building yeah, it was it was up progressively and it was building, getting worse and, and, worse and it was almost as if we were surfing in when we came in at the end right? yeah we were surfing a little yeah. bit oh yeah but then i told you once we get to the river it all ends and it did right and, and then the current began oh yeah, yeah then the current begins <laughs> yes and then uh that first night uh you know i'll show you a little bit of video we had some fun there and uh, we're testing safety equipment right yeah i mean and we anchored in the tennis hall right yeah the tennis hall yeah. cut off my Which was favorite a great anchor. Anchor. yeah, yeah great. my favorite anchorage of all but then uh and i slept like a baby i don't know about you so was that, that was that was better than being at a dock yeah, the, the, we were the just, boat just gets you, held perfectly yeah. straight. It's not moving. But uh, I think a new boat owner, you got a little... Uh, you as got the, up as the captain in charge, right? I didn't sleep <laughs> too well. Yeah. And, uh, the and weight the, of responsibility kept yeah, you up. The, and, not, and, the, not the storms. And, and you guys have had that experience. <laughs> yes, um, and you have not. And, and so that was a piece of equipment we hadn't really tested too much, the windlass. Oh, yeah. Um, it wasn't all chain. And, it was and chain the, and yeah, the anchor and road. Yeah. yeah. The anchor yeah, right. is, I, in my opinion, a little small. Mm -hmm. And it's an all road, all road. So that road. made you nervous, but I I've anchored there several times. I love that anchorage, and I it, it was gonna hold or it wasn't. You know, once we right. set it and, yeah. and set like, it and forget it. Yeah, that was about a three to four knot current that night. Yeah, it was and just so it, it, it didn't well, hold. We it, know for sure it was three knots because right. at one point we were in drifting morning, at two point right. eight. Right when we pulled the yeah. anchor in the morning and drifted, it was, that current yeah. was so rough that the props were turning down below because i had to go down there the next morning and check <laughs> it and yeah there's been engine and, room check right but that was probably and that windless we just never used it we didn't know anything about it it did yeah. it, it had gotten tested during yeah, the we, survey we off -checked it. like right. it worked but yeah. it didn't work great right <laughs> yeah and it was our learning curve for us because we sat on an extra line we shouldn't have set out it scared all of us and right and that was took us an hour to get the damn thing up but working together as a team but that's why you 
you know, you have your deck hand first, so you learn all of this stuff. Right. That way you're not out there with your wife trying to do that. You know now we need to get a right. new foot switch on that thing. Right. And uh, Yep, there's, but, there's some uh, items that need to be addressed. On that an anchor. Discrepancies. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to anchor the first night. Then the next night uh, we stayed at Bobby's Fish Camp. That was a long day. Yeah. How'd you like Bobby's Fish Camp? It was everything that I've read about. <laughs> <laughs> and then some, yes. I love Bobby's Fish it, Camp. It's that awesome. was the coolest yeah. place. It's, that, it, it's just one of those things that it's almost like a, a page out of history, right? Yeah. You, it's a throwback. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, a hundred throwback. foot floating dock yeah. in the middle of nothing right. with like some shacks and buildings and like a really friendly guy, guy was, was the, randy was yeah, the owner randall yeah it was randall. great real nice guy what about going through that that first lock were you nervous about going through your first lock yeah and it was in the daylight and then the next one was at night so uh, oh yeah, but the, yeah the first one uh yeah i was i was nervous i i had the adrenaline shakes after we uh we got in there and I didn't you know, notice because you pull it right in like you've yeah. done it your well, whole life. The first lock I had to lasso the pin. Yeah. The oh, second yeah. lock. <laughs> yeah, you got second lock better. was smooth. The first right. one I had to like. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that was the first. Um, That's the first time you've ever locked a boat from the downstairs helm, right? I had ever done everything from the upstairs. I think we did that one from downstairs helm. Okay. And so that was, it was you, a little were, different were perspective, right, me, yeah. right? Yeah. One thing I love about this boat is I don't really have the option on Southern Estate. I've pretty much got to back it into the slips, unless the power's in the back. Then I got to pull forward because I only have one place to catch power on this. I personally, when you back your boat in, I think it's harder to pull them out of the in the Marines. They can be there can be situations where it's actually harder to pull out because when you have forwarded in like we're we're in the slip today and you back it out, then you can control your boat and take off where that situation over at home port, that was backed right. in there. That's a tricky little situation. Yeah, and you bring out, and, and the bow, right, gets that the, wind the gust part. right off. The, yeah, the yeah. pointy part, part is the bow. Right. Yeah, yeah, we, I may have called the... He ends. has a few problems I with call, radio calls. I called the ends of the boat a little wrong <laughs> to one of the toes, and I'm sure they thought, yeah, It's because the toes don't have a pointy part, so yeah. you couldn't recognize which was yeah, the bow thanks, and which James. was the stern. I appreciate the help, Sarah. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm here for. The <laughs> greatest thing is Steve's really been helping, because uh, James started the project with the AIS, uh, hooking it to Navionics. Uh, and... Uh, James got it to a certain point, and he got it on everything except Navionics. Yeah, Navionics isn't like me. Yeah. So I can make him work on anything else. Do you think you could do it now that Steve showed you? If he shows me the numbers, yeah. The ports. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. too easy. Once yeah. you figure it out, well, you just and, copy paste. And, and we're trying to adapt it into a really kind of inexpensive piece of gear, right? A Raspberry yeah. Pi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's based a Daisy to, system, a uh, Daisy to it. But yeah. It's not on the approved list of components. Yet from Navionics, right? So, but it's great. But it's it, a great it, yeah. piece of equipment. Right. It's good gear for yeah. very little money, and I love it. It's what I use on my boat. Right. Like I recommend it to everyone. But there are quirks making it worth with uh, the big, like big tech mm -hmm. platforms. Right. But so Steve's still working on it, and we will share all of the components once you get it, where we feel that it's. it's but it was showed us the names of the uh, the vessels. Yeah. Um, it showed us, uh, you know, the toes coming. It was. I thought we our antenna. We must have a weakness in our antenna because we were probably get them within a mile. Would you say? Yeah, three to a mile to three. Yeah, yeah. We, on the, we're using on the, the existing antennas yeah. on the boat, boat and yes. I'm not confident in their like their continuity. Yeah, so, I think they're they're not working right. right. So and so he's got a little work to do with that, and he's going to keep working on the system. We're not going to. Uh, um, or we'll probably just some at some point that one will get permanently installed on right. this boat. Right. But then he's building us a little box, uh, and we'll send you the parts and an antenna so we can just make a a, a, a a universal one that we can. Because coming up the river, I thought the AIS was freaking phenomenal. I've never had it before coming up the river, but now that I I won't go up without it again. Yeah, it's nice. You can just reach out, you know, contact those those vessels uh, by name, uh, find out the intentions. You know, and, and communicate with them, um, but you know they're there as opposed to just coming around a bend and oh, all of a sudden I've and got a just, radio. Just being able to see around the corner is right. all that really like. That's right. huge. Right. I don't care if I can see twenty miles up the river, but if I can just see, see. around the next bend with the AIS, seeing the next toe, 
Yeah. That's so useful. And then being able to uh, push your finger on the button and being able to see the, identify the name, right. so you can call and the you name. See their speed over ground. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, that's and, and that's helpful. all good information. So you kind of know how fast you're either going to. And a lot of times you can get them the or them. Yeah. where you can see how big of a toe it yep. is. Is it a little tiny one one barge thing right. or is it yep. triple stacked? You know. Yeah, and you come you combine that with the Navionics chart and you say, okay, there's a couple of really tight turns. You know what? I'm just going to lay back, let him get through that and then I see a little stretch you know call him and say hey let me come around you now and uh, it just seems and to went work smooth. I don't think we had a single like yeah. passing or crossing or anything yeah. that went was yeah. stressful we so I'll, I'll link the Daisy 2 to the video for the description down below here and then we had to buy not a, a paid sponsorship by the way no, we just it, really love the gear yeah right <laughs> and, yeah, and, I mean you can buy plug and play stuff yes and, they're and, like 700 bucks yeah and, and it's a lot more money right yeah and so and that's uh, what cheap would, 700 what, is cheap like AIS yeah. is expensive yeah i, I love this stuff because it's so inexpensive it's like i think it's 150 for the daisy yeah. 200 said and done i think is probably about what it Say costs. Again? like 200 bucks is probably what it costs yeah with to, uh, the wi-fi yeah i had to get a wi-fi a nema wi-fi and that's where you were having the problems getting it yeah so that uses all those nema protocols uh and then you know TCP IP versus UDP <laughs> oh versus God. EIEIO, and then Paul's head. Paul just doesn't understand spinning. any of this, so it's been an ongoing joke. We yeah. just make up letters and pretend like that's. But you guys got to remember, <laughs> Steve is an IT. That's what he did for a living. He worked right. For I GE. did thirty-five years, uh, various companies, uh, doing technology. I, I'm old enough that it wasn't even IT back then, right? It was. FCC radios and television and that correct. and then it Pre just evolved. Pre internet technology. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this is right up your alley right. and and you love doing it too. You can, I, yeah, it, I did it took it. you a lot of time though. I, I, I did it for a lot of years and uh, so you don't do something like that uh, for a long time if you don't like it and enjoy it. And I did. Um, so it's kind of fun to be able to apply that now into yeah, right. you know this this area. It's a little different for me, but it's still technology. Because what I'd like to see on this boat here is for you for like let's find the inexpensive autopilot, get it all talking on this NEMA, and because you can do stuff like that, you probably. You know, I think we should have a thousand dollar price tag on of putting the autopilot on here and then connecting it to the NEMA and getting it talking to even Navionics. Do you think you could do that? Sure. That Anything's be, possible. Yeah, I know. And I, I didn't think it was going to be possible because... It's an easy thing to say. It's yeah. a hard thing to do. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah, but we won't talk about how many hours I sat in here <laughs> oh, yeah, that's working what I'm on saying. configurations. A massive but, amount of hours. Or the rat's nest of wires we yeah, have. Just yeah, we don't everywhere. show that on camera. <laughs> I think you should. But. Yeah, I don't know. OSHA might come. Whoever the governing agency might come and have, have a discussion with it's a us. a fire hazard or something. <laughs> anyway, it's all low voltage. Our good. system is... <clears throat> Very crude right now, but it worked great. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, it did and, and that was it. I mean, it, it gave us the information we needed. And you yeah. can't. I mean, me and James both we can't thank you enough because we do do quite a few deliveries, and we need that coming up the river now. Yeah, we're right. looking, and, we're looking to build like a portable plug and play, right. like just put it in twelve volt right. kind of system. S system right. where we can and just you walk made, on like, anybody's a huge boat leap right. in making yeah, that just possible. Take it. Take it with you. It's almost like a go bag. For yes, AIS, exactly. Right. Where well, yeah. we can just be like, "Hey, twelve volt," and have all of our stuff. You right. know. Yep. And we have to have basically, uh, you're, like I said, that system here. I'd like you to put it in the box. Get the antenna that we want for it. Let's keep that because you will need that because you're tech support now for the channel. You know that, right? Awesome. <laughs> can't tell you how much I'm honored. We're gonna put that. his email up so you can all ask him questions. <laughs> We're not yeah. doing that. No, that's <laughs> a joke. Uh, no, yeah. Steve is very, very busy guy, but uh, he loves boating. He loves, uh, and he will help people. Oh, uh, sure. But we should be yeah. able to, we're not going to even start right now with what has to be done because he'll write a checklist for us and say, because. Uh, it's mostly because Paul doesn't know what it is. No, I have no clue. <laughs> I couldn't. But I didn't think it was going to be possible. I really didn't. But you. Uh, he was doubting me. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I doubt, was doubting. Uh, Thomas, but, uh, yeah, and so. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I've noticed about the boating community um, is everybody's really helpful. Yeah, they right? are. And so we kind of laugh about, oh, he'll, he'll help. But I don't mind that. I enjoy that. Um, it's probably because I was in a service industry for so long. So, right. So helping people with their problems is, 
is something I'm just used to. But you know? we also need it to get a little bit further along and clean it up, and then you have the sheet there where you can just say, yeah, yeah. you got to go to that Yeah, once you make it work, then all you have to do is, you know, capture all those configurations, and then it's just repeatable. Yeah, then anyone right. can just look at the instructions yeah, right. and plug in the Yeah, right. And... Then what, once you get it and you teach me and James, then we should be able to talk most people through it, and you would, should be just in the background doing your... Uh, I got a nickname for him, but yeah, well, I'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> we don't. The nicknames don't go on the air. Right? We're gonna have to bleep it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that was a that was a win. Yeah, was it was. It really, really. We had was. a lot of wins on the trip. You know, we had the challenges. Yeah. Um, the but, steering fell. The steering rod fell off. We're heading to the beach. I can't steer the boat. Right. That was not me. That, that was not me. Somebody a little more experienced than me was all of a sudden went the goat tying. I can't do it. I didn't. I I, I I had no steerage, and I'm like, what the. Heck? what just happened like because and so we got down to the helm and i was like and there's no steering there and so james that was the, that was the nice thing about having the multiple hands and the experience sure, yeah. so james immediately went in the lazarette looked at you know the, the, the actual rod, mechanisms, the mechanisms and, and there was a bolt um that holds yep. the ram uh to the, to the rudder assembly and, and, it, and it had it, come it, loose the actual connection between the the uh, hydraulic ram and the steering rod for the rudders uh, just was a stainless steel bolt with a nut and there was no securing on it so it over the action of steering back and forth it had just worked loose and fell off right. and then the whole thing disconnected yep. so you could steer all you want and it would move the ram yeah but it, it wasn't was moving the rudders <laughs> yeah so, so li yeah. simple solution yeah. a little loctite so we in, or a tie we wire in, we like, were in strong current right and so you guys were working on that i'm over there you know just working the gears and the throttles to try to stay straight yeah. in the in the channel while we got it fixed and we Which, got it fixed by the way was terrifying when you slammed it from forward to reverse while i was in the lazarette <laughs> sorry because it sounded like a 12 gauge went off next to my head i think that's a little bit about that tension. by the way pro tip if you're going from forward to reverse throttle down throttle down first. go to neutral <laughs> right. let the let the gears slow down and then shift those right. zf transmissions <laughs> earn they handle money. it like a champ yeah, yeah, they, yeah they're worth every penny they're apparently still working fine but you know that's the Point you made earlier about how sometimes stress can impact the way you think. Yeah, right. Yeah, and stress or, makes you dumb. Act, it always right? does, and, and so, it happens to everyone. It is not something to be ashamed of. Right. Under stress, everyone gets exponentially stupid, and you get uh, target fixation, that's, which I've talked to you about. That's pretty bad for me. Then exponentially, exponentially stupid. stupid yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you start it's out a, already a little look, stupid, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah, you did we a great joke, job. We joke around like, a lot to have fun, but. Uh, you know, you guys got it fixed, and, and we were back underway, right? Yeah, it took us literally. Oh, like 15. five minutes or whatever, and right. I had yeah, it. Was less. I was just yelling to him to move the helm so I could get the linkage back together, and yep. we were underway. And I don't think people understand this because this is a the, the part of the trip that we did was it's desolated. There are three 100 mile days basically. That, the last day was a little bit longer than the other two days. But they were mostly full dawn to dusk underway. Yeah, right. right. There are five knots you're going fighting the current. Yeah. And this boat did freaking phenomenal as far as the engines is perfect, yeah, like sewing solid, machines. Solid engines. Just uh, the yep. the gears worked perfect. Yep. And we did have a one, and we laughed, and we had a, we had a great trip. I, right. I really enjoyed it. I, yeah, and you say dust to dawn until the last day, the longest day, and yeah, then it was that. it was past. Uh, we were dust. on daylight saving time. Yeah, we were, <laughs> so we come into Demopolis, yeah. and. Uh, and we'd had the night on anchor. There were some really big storms come through. Yes. And so we um, had left, knowing the rivers were in a really good state. And then certainly, all of a sudden, the hydrological maps on the NOAA site they show stuff starting to come, come back up. up. Right. And as we start coming further north, we were expecting current drop, current, in, current we, increase. It increased. We had the worst current on and the last. And so day. then here I am, the new guy, coming into Demopolis, Demopolis in the dark right with yeah. a handheld spotlight and the water release was right. tremendous yeah it, it yeah. throws you know, the boat everywhere yeah, yeah. it was throwing the boat everywhere and and so you know i had to keep some throttle in it so that i had steerage and you kind of come into the lock a little not but, hot but and then backed it out yeah it was right no problem you pulled right up to that one like you've been doing it your whole oh, life oh yeah the, the demopolis lock was like easy i just yeah, he just reached out the, and pulled that. Yeah, and, grabbed the bollard and it was no big deal. And you'll get exponentially 100% every time you drive the boat. Not yeah, even I, still, slipping, I started and feeling that you on have, the trip. Like right. I said that last night, you followed Paul's rule of doubling your skill every day. 
Yeah. Like the first day to the next day, you were twice as good, yeah. and the next day you were twice as good. Yeah, you know when he told me that initially, I, I it said, sounds oh, like he's yes, just saying that to make yeah. me feel a little no. better <laughs> about how it awful is I am. Hundred percent legitimate. But I can start to yep. feel that now. Like when we pulled in here after coming through the lock, and um, you know it was starting to rain. There was you know lightning in the distance, and you knew the winds were getting ready to get up. Oh and, yeah, they, we, you know, and I start tightening up. And, and you're and, you're at the end of a fourteen hour day at that right. point. Yeah. In so the dark. In the and dark. you're in the dark, and we're we're banging logs the whole time, and I know that's stressing you out, and yeah. like so. I kept you, thinking you were like dropping the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it was, that was just stuff hitting us. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so like you got to account for that. the The end of a long day like that, you're yeah. not as good as you were when you yeah, left the dock that morning. Yeah, it's there, and you don't realize yeah. it. Yeah, it's and it's hard to evaluate in the moment because you are fatigued. Everyone's fatigued. fatigued we've yeah, we've right. been doing it all yeah. day. But we got in here and got tied in. You know. Didn't break anything. Didn't yeah. hurt anybody. No. So good no one. Trip. No, we didn't even scream at each other. So it no. was a good day. Yeah, I don't. I don't think once. I mean, I uh, don't listen to you when you yell well, at me. Yeah. <laughs> he did yell at us once. Yeah, I think so. It, he yelled at us once. once, but that's because we were down. In we the were engine room. working in the engine room on a water leak at the same time that he had at the synchro. Yeah, failed. the synchro fell. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so suddenly, his port engine dropped to zero, and he didn't know what was going on. And he's talking, trying to get us like ask for help, and we just can't hear him because we're in the engine room, and so he's just yelling at us on the radio. <laughs> we have no idea. So then after like 20 minutes of him yelling and being stressed out, we're like, "What's up, man? How's it going?" Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he realized we were down in the engine room working right, either. Right. Yeah. And I mean, so the synchros, we just took them off. You know, we hand synchronized them. We kind of used the ear to, what you to should, listen. You need to get that development yeah. and that skill. Yeah, it was that. like I told him, I don't have enough time on the boat yet to, yeah, especially up on the flybridge. It's a little different down at the lower helm because you, you got hear those you motors. can hear the You're uh, standing motors. on the engine, right. so yeah. you can feel Upstairs, them. Upstairs, you know, it's a little further away, a little more separation, and so it's harder to hear them. You can almost feel it though when yeah, you start right. to get you can hear that, that special sink. little hum. And, yeah. yeah, and yeah, you kind of can feel it in the throttles. That's how yeah. I always like to do it. Yeah. I like to touch both throttles, and you kind of feel the vibration. Yep. I don't know if that's just my own. I may like, never ritual, use the synchronizer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I don't have right. one. Yeah. And Paul has the like the, not, light, the manual ones, one yeah. where he just does it off lights. Yeah. I, I don't like have those. a synchro, and I'll never spend the money on it because once you learn to do it, it's like, well, yeah, you know, I can just it. hear the the, yeah. the bomber hum, the yeah. wah wah. Yeah. But like, it is nice, you know. You just pop. It's that super on, easy when you just pop you it just on. Use the one throttle, <laughs> and it's all good. Yeah. So. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end this video today. Thank you, Steve. That Thank you, guys. Trip. I mean, it was great having your experience and help yeah. the whole trip. And I know we've got some more uh, miles to do. I don't know if you're joining us, but I know, Paul, you'll be helping me and my wife, Becky. Yeah. You know, to, to So now get, it's time to introduce her introduce to the boat her. and get her. Yeah, I didn't want to throw that at her while I was trying to learn. And you it know, was perfect. too overwhelming. Yeah, that would add more stress for you yeah. to also have your wife where you're, you know, you're worried about her. Right. Yeah, right. It's easier right. when, like, you don't care if I fall off the boat. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe a little, yeah. you know. Well, I swim. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, anyway, guys, thank you yeah. so much. I live life with no regret. I think Steve does, we do. too. Yeah. Steve Absolutely. will be. Can he I does say, now. Can <laughs> I say, Steve, what, you're gonna, what your intentions, why you bought this boat? Or I can't say it yet. Sure. I mean, I, I have he no did secrets. The, well, oh, yeah. we're hiding it from certain people, but yeah, no, can, that's fine. Yeah, he did the Cannonball Race, which right. is a antique motorcycle race, endurance run across, across America, America. hundred year old or older motorcycles, which is gnarly by the way, over yeah. seventeen that's days thing. Yeah, so the hundred mile days, you know, I want, yeah, he didn't care. <laughs> yeah, you're on a bicycle with a motor, you know, doing two hundred miles a day at thirty miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you get to. Uh, that, and then America's Great Loop, and you'll be the first American to complete that accomplishment once you're done with to it. To have done both of those events. Right? Yeah. Right. So well, yeah. I wish you luck. And uh, thanks. Anyway, yeah. James, I know you live life with no regret. Always. Yep. And I know Steve does too. Yep. Thank you guys so much for watching. If don't hit us up too much with the AIS just yet, but we are getting to we it. We haven't Steve, quite figured it out. This is kind of a preview. You'll have more to come. Come, on yes. That. We're right. in beta we, right now. Yeah, we're <laughs> in beta. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-beta. Pre-beta. Yeah, not uh, alpha, alpha, and alpha and a half. Beta, <laughs> alpha and a half. Alpha 2.0. Because he loves all our uh, tech acronyms. Anyway, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank